Welcome back to GCTV and welcome back to the beautiful Mexico City at the closing stages of the Longines Global Champions to a Grand Prix of Mexico and a rather remarkable finish here in this beautiful city that has been enjoyed and appreciated by thousands of fans over the weekend and arguably every single one of them cheering for many riders in the jump off but in particular Carlos Encorero that joins us live in the studio. Carlos please take a mic there have a word with me welcome to the studio congratulations let me start there. Thank you so much. Bittersweet day for you, but I have no doubt that this must be an incredible moment for you. Yeah, as you say, bit bittersweet, I'm sure. I'll really appreciate it later. I'm still kind of in the shock and ambience of it all. Uh, this is honestly an unbelievable show for, for us, going into the jump off and just hearing the crowd cheer for you like that. And then when you get started, everything is so quiet. You could hear a pin drop. It's unbelievable. You spoke to us earlier today about being a young man jumping here for many, many years. Looking at your career now, and I actually see some goosebumps on your arm as well, and I think that's maybe indicative of where this goes. If you could speak to that young 15-year-old boy and say to him what at this point he has standing in a jump off of the LGCT Grand Prix. Honestly, there's so many things I, I could say, but just keep, keep his head down and keep going and trust the process because so many weekends you really don't want to do it anymore. I mean, in this sport, there's so many more downs than, than ups. You rarely win. And uh, I would tell him to enjoy those few moments, those few wins, and just keep going because you'll get there. I want to talk about the round itself. But again, I have a feeling that these people are going to mob you when you make your way down. The environment, being able to jump in this, do, are you able to block it out? Do you r live off of it? How do you feel about an environment like this when you're in the ring? Yeah, honestly, it's a bit of a mixture, you know, like the first days, it's kind of intimidating because it's very different to what we're used to. You know, I've been in Wellington where Saturday nights there is ambience, but it's not like this. Nothing is like this for us. So first day kind of jittery. And then as the weekend progressed and my horses started jumping good, I kind of started to grow off of it and feed off of it. And I think today showed my horse did as well. You know, they get in the ring and they grow. And uh, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better performance out of him today. We talk about the jump off as well, but let's start with round one because round one was described by, by Peter Grant, the designer, by Frederick DeBacher, by many as being a really, really difficult, asking a lot of questions. Yeah. Talk to me about that superb round one, going clear, getting into that jump off. How testing was that opening round? Was it as difficult as you perhaps felt it walked? Yeah, honestly, the whole week has been quite tough here. It's my first uh, first time jumping for, for a team on the GCL. So yesterday were my first kind of experience in those classes. And I thought since the first round, it was tough test. And second round, even more. I mean, few clears. Um, I walked the class today. I thought it was fair, but long, a lot of efforts. And, you know, the horses had to jump a lot this weekend already. So I thought for sure there wasn't going to be many clears. I thought maybe a bit more than five. Um, but honestly, the ground here is so fantastic and the horses jump amazing, so. Talk to us a little bit more for those that are, are horse-centric. Portos Maestro, talk to us about talk to us about the horse, talk to us about the relationship, the breeding, the history, how long it goes back for you. I want to find out more about this pairing. Yeah, I mean, I think up to now he's the best horse I've ever sat on and we've kind of grown into a relationship together. I got him when he was a seven-year-old. He was actually jumping with a young Belgian rider, Seppe Wouters, and he went to the Children's Europeans and did some Children's Nations Cup, so not so many people saw him. And then uh, when the Belgian championships for young horses came up, we saw him there and saw him with this little boy riding around those big jumps and he impressed us from day one. Um, and since then, it's just been getting better and better, you know, like I never had a doubt of any of his abilities. It was more just keeping myself contained with him because when he was eight years old, I felt like he could jump this straight away. So we kind of had to take it slow just for ourselves to give the horse time to grow in his mind. And we kind of pushed him really at the end of last year. He did a couple five stars in, in Mexico and performed very well. And he's been amazing this year. He won a Grand Prix in Ocala, um, then did a, one of those five stars in Wellington that are always very tough tests. And he just has answered every question we've asked of him. So I couldn't have asked for a better partner in him. What was going through your mind when you were standing at the end gates coming into the jump off? Obviously, history beckons. There's an opportunity to risk it all. What was going through your mind? Yeah, I honestly, I have a very fast horse. He's really quick when you just let the rain go. 
he goes. And uh, I thought I had a chance today. There was a couple of early rails with the first riders, but I did know Nicola was behind me with that very quick mare, Luna. So I knew I had to risk it. I wasn't going to go for, for the clear round. And unfortunately, a couple of rails came down. He's also not the most experienced horse, and I'm not the most experienced rider at this level in jump off. So I hope we'll get there in the future. And out of only five jump off competitors to have two of them local riders, what does that say for the show? What does that say for the level of Mexican riders that can put on a display like this to the world? Yeah, I think, honestly, I think it's the first time in history that we've had two Mexican riders in the jump off. I'm not sure if that's correct, but it, out of five, it's uh, fantastic for us. I mean, the whole crowd supported us the whole weekend and kind of fed all this energy into us um, so we're very grateful to them and I think it just shows how much the sport has grown here in Mexico we have some real horse and rider combinations that can compete against the best riders in the world you know it's not just a local show here it's the best of the best and a very tough track today so I'm happy and, and proud to be Mexican today I'm pretty sure that again it's a bittersweet moment but with time you'll appreciate what incredible achievement this is for you so congratulations to you. you well so done much. thank you for hosting us here in thank Mexico you. we've had a wonderful time Carlos and Guerrero joining us in thank studio so much, after yes. a wonderful performance thank in that you. jump off cheers let's go to the podium celebration and enjoy the top three finishes consistency that it shows over the first three stages of this championship it is absolutely outstanding he's fairly unique as the least you can say Rockefeller and the partnership he has with Asnar is unique to say the least the traditional sombreros for Eduardo Alvarez Asnar as the Azevedo indicates that Asnar is standing on no he is indeed on uh, number three and the Azevedo steps up to the podium. Luis Felipe with the Sierra du Pedro. This is no doubt a highlight in uh, the Brazilian's career. Luis Felipe de Azevedo has prepared his season in the Middle East. And those efforts, those uh, investments that he made over the winter make him now number two. And the winter was spent in Wellington, Florida, by this man, Nicola Filipans. After this, he will fly home after a long stay here in the Americas. Now back to Belgium, to Oudsbergen, where Team Filipans is based, with the ATM Luna van der Ruitenshof, his third Grand Prix win. As here, everybody now stands in honor of La Bromanson, the Belgian national anthem. His twin brother, Olivier, has finished on the podium of the Longy Global Champions Tour six times. This is the eighth podium finish for Nicola. Nicola has the upper hand in that statistic, but in terms of wins, it is a third for Nicola. And so far, zero for his uh, twin brother. So when they uh, fly out to Shanghai, they can uh, discuss and uh, find another battle for Nicola, maybe to uh, close up on his brother. Don't forget that uh, their father, the great Ludo Filipart, is also a uh, multi launching Global Champions Tour Grand Prix winner. He is actually the first ever champion of uh, the launching Global Champions Tour. He won the stage, or won the series back in uh, 20, oh, 2006 in the first year where he won uh, numerous Grand Prix in that very first season on that great horse Parco the launching watch 
Michael Vimeuillet in behalf of Lomachin. And there the trophy out of the hands of Leonardo Pin, director. Of GNP Seguros. Partner of the Mexico City stage. And Ludo Filipatz has won two Grand Prix in his career. So his son has now officially overtaken Ludo also in terms of a Grand Prix wins. Did it already, both of his sons, in terms of podium finishes. And now also more wins for Nicola than they were for Ludo Filipatz. Juan Manuel Cusio, president of the Mexican Equestrian Federation, with the trophy for Luis Felipe de Azevedo Fio. And Jan Tops to step up to the podium and congratulate Eduardo Alvarez Aznar, his championship leader. And Eduardo Arieta, Alvaro Arieta, I should say, he was part of the uh, management that led the Dream Motion to uh, the Super Cup win on the Global Champions League in Prague in uh, 2018. The two Spaniards know each other were very well. Arieta also very much involved. The director of uh, the event at the Club Campo de Villa in Madrid, where we will land in what is that now? In five weeks' time, first it is Shanghai in three weeks. And then the busy European summer comes up. The Sobreros. For the traditional picture. Uh, yes, launching at the front. Sombre means shadow. Uh, these uh, sombreros, as you can see, give a lot of shadow on heads and shoulders of Mexicans, and also the Belgian, the Brazilian, and the Spaniards. The Azevedo takes his time. Filipas is quicker, not only in the jump off, but also on the champagne shower. And then out of the corner comes Aznar with a second spray. And the Azevedo, lost, lost. The launching Global Champions Tour of Mexico City, ladies and gentlemen, quietly comes to an end. Nicola Filipars has won the Grand Prix, has laid his hands on the golden ticket for the Super Grand Prix in Prague. A great result for Luis Felipe de Azevedo for his first ever podium. And Eduardo Aznar makes it another podium for him and for that unbelievable horse of his Rockefeller de Pleville Bois Margot. Aznar, who... Uh, has never won a stage so far but had plenty of seconds and thirds this is his fifth podium four of them with Rockefeller de Pleville Bois Margot but uh, the main thing is that he has collected once again major A beautiful aerial shot of Mexico City as we go back inside the ring, back inside the arena for those podium celebrations of Nikola Filipatz riding proud on his horse. Luna van Aretasov has been absolutely outstanding and deserves that first place today to jump double clear in such testing conditions under such a difficult ring set by Peter Grant. What has been done today by Nikola Filipatz for a third LGCT Grand Prix win certainly will go down in history, at least for him, as one of the best performances of his career. Luis Felipe Azevedo finds himself in second place on Sierra de Pedro. What a brilliant result for him as well. And then Eduardo Alvarez Azna, who now earns himself massive, massive championship points. He now no longer is only the championship leader that we spoke to in Miami, but now becomes a real championship contender. Because with three strong results in the early stage of the season, he only needs five strong remaining results for the rest of the year to go on and win the overall title. 
Filipats in first, Azevedu in second, and Aznar in third, who starts to look like a real LGCT championship contender. Carlos Henquerero, who we had in studio a few moments ago in fourth, and then Vasquez, the other local Mexican rider, in fifth place, having three fences down in the jump off. But still, as Carlos Henquerero said, to have two Mexicans and a five rider jump off, it has been an outstanding performance from the Mexican riders here that has been greatly appreciated, as you can hear, by every single one of the thousands of fans that have come through today. We take a quick break. When we return, we will find out how things are going for second and third. And of course, obviously have the first place winner, Nicola Philippots, coming into the studio as well. So as the riders do their lap of honor, maybe we can show that. That is a lovely moment. The riders doing their lap of honor, appreciated by the fans. Vamos is the cry from the crowd as three, two and one get to go on and have their final goodbyes. A lot of love for Eduardo Alvarez Aznar as well. From Spain, yes, nonetheless, but appreciated. And Luis Filippo Azevedo, the Brazilian as well, getting a lot of love from the Mexican fans. We will hear from the two of them in a few moments' time. Let's take a break when we return. A lot more from GCTV and we hear from your podium places. Take a break, we're back next. Welcome back to GCTV and welcome back to the post studio of the LGCT Grand Prix of Mexico City. What's funny is just behind the cameras, we have Nicola Philippard standing by waiting to come through and chat to us. And there are fans just behind that that are trying to take some selfies of them a little bit inside a frame of Nicola Philippard. There's some fans as well that will be starting to build up here too. But we are waiting for third and second place finishers to now come through and have a word with Rosie Tapner. I believe that Luis Felipe Azevedo is standing by your second place finisher with Rosie Tapna. Yeah, thank you, Louis. Going into that, you were the last to go. What was your mindset going into the jump off? Honestly, um, my horse is just 10 years old and she's very competitive normally. Uh, but I'm not so competitive on that moment because, okay, I must to say it's a long time and don't do this level, uh, I mean, often, you know. And then we decided to do Global Champions Tour this year. And then I need to also to stay a little bit more in the game. The med was there to make a better time and maybe to try to catch the first place. 
that's for sure I'm very happy with the second. But um, yeah, honestly, between the two and three, I get one strike more than what I could imagine and have it. And then on the end, I didn't could take the, read, the good rhythm again to try to go faster. But, and then and at the same time, I realized it was just one clear round. So I say maybe keep saving and then try to do a nice run. And why not second place in a so important show? It's, it's already amazing. Uh, I'm very happy and I'm also, which give me more hope for the future that Mayor, she jumped here three days in a row uh, and she was fourth in the first day, six in the individual and third in the team in the second day and today's second day Grand Prix. So it was a great weekend and she proved she's one of the best. And then uh, uh, we start with that Mayor when she was six years old, we, we made all the categories together to come in the bigger level and now I'm very happy to done and hope to continue for a while. Absolutely, you must be really happy and you've got your family here as well, just a word on that. Yes, I have all my family in Miami. Uh, here I have my son compete with me. They are all in Europe uh, or someone in Brazil and someone others in Wellington in America. My family, they follow me absolutely sure. And uh, unfortunately, those ones in Europe, they don't sleep. Uh, this, in Brazil, they are okay in Wellington also. My family is, is a little bit all around, all around the world in that moment. Listen, huge congratulations, not only just for the second today, but the whole weekend. Well done. Thank you very much and thank you for your support. Always there when you need. Thank you. Thank you. What a fantastic performance from Luis Felipe Azevedo finishing in second place today at the LGCT Grand Prix of Mexico City. Eduardo Azna now moving from championship leader to serious championship contender. We'll hear from him in a few moments' time. But for now, it is all about the man of the hour. It is all about your champion of Mexico City, who, as you can imagine, hasn't stopped. Are you allowed? No, no. Hey, listen, if there's ever a day that you're allowed, it's okay. All right, all right. Let's 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 get the mic in here. Nicola Filipas, congratulations. A third LGCT Grand Prix win in the bag. Yeah. You said to me off air that the best ones are the least, are the ones that surprise you the most. Is that correct? Yeah, I didn't expect it today. Uh, she's a fantastic horse, but last year she was a bit, a little bit more doubtful on the grass, but this week she truly jumped unbelievable. And I cannot thank more my family, uh, Team H&M, Charlotte Soderstrom, to, to be owner of, of this horse and all the team behind me. She's, she's an unbelievable mare. You've been stateside for a very long time now. Remind us just how long the preparation has been, but do you feel having come to the United States for so long to continue this preparation, has that helped you get to this point? Well, I think uh, we've been coming the four, year, the four last years to Florida, to Wellington to compete there. And then I did know, I did a few times Miami and Mexico. Luna, she actually didn't come to America. She came from Europe, mm -hmm. which okay. is even more important. My team behind me at home, she, she felt great two weeks. She jumped great in Miami. She jumped very good this week. And I cannot thank her more. She's a truly unbelievable horse. I, I have a feeling that uh, this is going to up the, the stock, up the, the, the business rankings. I also believe that maybe you may have overtaken your father in wins. Freddie Tobacco, I think I heard something like that. Do you and your dad play a competition? And uh, unfortunately, Olivia is not in the race yet, but do you and your dad play a competition like this? To be honest, I didn't know, but he, he won in 2006. He won the, the first overall Very ranking. First, yeah. He won the first overall ranking, so I didn't do that yet. So uh, I think it's, it's fantastic to, to follow my father on the global tour here. It's fantastic. And uh, it's also because of him that I'm here and he finds me the horses. He taught me to ride. So I think it's unbelievable that without them, I wouldn't be here. Let's talk about round one before we get to the jump off, because we, we spoke to Peter Grant, the designer. We had Frederick give us some analysis on the ring. It looked like what he built for round one looked very big, very scary. Huge, huge challenges for you to come in clear, get into the jump off means that you dealt with it. Talk to me about round one first. How challenging was that? I think for sure it's, it's, it's challenging. You have a, a really big ring. The horses jump very well on this ring. It's been, it's been big enough all week. The course is always quite, quite big here, but the horses jump well. We tried to make our own plan, and I think uh, we were lucky enough. There were not too many in the jump off, so I could see a little bit what the, what the guys in front of me did. Mm. So I tried to make a little bit my own plan and tried to, to stay clear. Having only Azevedo ahead of you in the jump off and watching fences go down, that almost gave you a bit of a cushion to say, I just need to go slow and clear here. 
Did that change your plan? Because it looked as if you became a little more conservative. I think for sure it's it's always a big advantage if you can go in the end of a jump off. I think um, you can see a little bit what the other ones do. Uh, do. There was a few faults in, in the first tree, so I tried tried to be a bit sure, tried to make a clear round and, and tried to be lucky enough that I was fast enough to, to beat uh, Azevedo and in the end it worked out well, the plan. Did you feel that 45.05 was enough knowing that there was only Azevedo to come or were you a little bit nervous for the time? I think, of course, you're always nervous if somebody is after you. Uh, my horse is natural quite quick. She's quite quick off the ground. And, and I knew I, I had to try to go a little bit, but try to make sure to stay in the clear. And, and that would be good. So what I will ask you to do in a moment is put your uh, commentating hat on for us. We're going to ask you to commentate the round. But first, if I'm not mistaken, Eduardo Alvarez Azna is standing by to give us some reaction to his third place finish. And as we said, not only extending his championship lead, but becoming a serious championship contender with three strong results in the bag already. He only needs five more for the rest of the season. Rosie Tapner with Eduardo Alvarez Azna. Eduardo, a third today in the Longines Global Champions Tour Grand Prix, but you also extend that championship lead. Yeah, very happy with the result. The horse actually is jumping amazing this season in the Global Champions Tour Grand Prix. He's been three times in the top five, so that's uh, uh, a very impressive regularity from Rockefeller. And uh, yeah, for the championship, it's getting it's getting in the right way. So uh, we keep going. Now, next uh, show for me, it's going to be Madrid, uh, home show. So uh, I will try to do my best also again. You've got three really strong results already this season. Does that make you think about the championship and maybe pick and choose where you go? Yeah, well, we already did the selection of shows that we're going to do on the team. But uh, yeah, for sure, in this in this moment, I have to to keep an eye on this. It's an important season. Uh, I'm in a very good position now and try to keep uh, in the same. Just lastly, a word on Rockefeller because showed true determination today and such a veteran of the sport. Yeah, for me it's uh, different, uh, such a hard, big animal, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, today he jumped amazing, it was uh, my fault in the jump off, I, was, uh, I went in the inside line and it was too deep for him to clear that oxer, but uh, he jumped uh, unbelievable. Huge congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. Eduardo Alvarez Alzna after his third place finish. And as you said, three top five finishes in the first three Grand Prix of the season. It has been a superb start to 2024 for the Spaniard. And once again, Rockefeller delivering the goods. Nicola Filipatz in the studio with us talking about his LGCT Grand Prix win of here, Mexico City. Uh, take a look at the screen, Nicola. We're going to put your jump off round. I want you to talk us through this and explain to us just what was happening, what was in your mind. And as we go through this round, uh, guide us through jump for jump and take us through your uh, victory here in Mexico City. I started quite quite out of the canter, one to two. Then you would have to do seven or eight strides. I tried to go a little bit outside to, to really make sure that I stayed clear. I did eight, side, eight outside here. She doesn't have the biggest stride, so I could keep her good in the middle. I tried to turn a little short. It was a big vertical, so I tried to give a little bit space, but also keep a little bit the pace up here. There I, I went a little bit quicker to the double, but I got a good distance in, could have pushed her a little bit out. She really tried hard there. Then eight strides a little bit outside for me. Keep her good in the middle. And then here I got maybe a little bit stuck. I didn't get my first distance, but she really helped me out. I came a bit deep, but she really tried her best and just tried to stay quiet. Keep her good in the middle on the last jumps. Don't take too many risks. And it was fast enough. And it still just felt very casual, very calm though. They didn't look as if there was a single risk that you were no. taking there. I really tried not to take too many risks because all the ones got to fall in front so and she's naturally quite quick so it, I was, it was helping me a lot. Wonderful. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Frederick de Bakker is standing by for us. We have a, a question from Frederick, a technical question that he'd like to ask Nicola Filipas as well. So, Frederick de Bakker, if you're with us, thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, I will just let you know that uh, Nicola ran in here in such a hurry that we didn't wire him up. So I will translate the question through to him. But. Uh, uh, Fred Dubaka, if you are with us, let's uh, try and bring him on the screen and see if we can have a conversation about that technical line. Yes or no. Fred Dubaka, hey, I'm here with Nicola. He is listening. I will translate the question. Fire away. 
Well, first of all, Mark, please pass on uh, my uh, my congratulations to uh, to Nicola. We have to talk about um, about this course and about that uh, that final line. I really wonder. I've got all the numbers here on the screen. Only fence one is the only fence that didn't get taken down. So there was, in general, a very good spread of uh, of faults all around. But I do wonder what he makes of the impact of that. Uh, yeah, that that one crucial line. Three faults on the triple bar. That's not so much the case. But seventeen coming in to uh, the double combination, 12 coming out of the combination. If you look at it, of the 37 riders competing in this Grand Prix, 22 had it down. Of course, Philippards didn't, but the question is, what does Nicolas Philippards make of the impact of uh, that final double? All right, let me pass that through. So, Nicola, what is the impact of that final double? That's the question from Frederick de Bakker. We saw it play a big role, not for you, of course, but what was the impact you feel of that final double? In the first course, you mean? In the yeah. first, yeah. I think it rode, it, it rode very steady. Uh, I think many came in a little bit too deep or a little bit into flat. It was quite a tall vertical. I think the horses so, got a few confused. It was a little bit on the angle out of the triple bar. So the horses, I think, many got a bit confused. So it was very important to come in very well and keep the horse straight in there. Let's talk about what's coming up next. You are going to Shanghai? That's the plan, yeah. That is, was it not originally the plan? Oh, it was the plan, yeah. Okay, and Luna will go with you? I think she will go there, yeah. She okay. flies She flies back tonight, back home, so or tomorrow morning, and then we see a little bit, we regroup, and normally it's the plan she will go to Shanghai as well. What are you expecting from Shanghai? Because it's, it's a little bit of a unique place, because we haven't really been there for a couple of years from a global champion's perspective. I don't know how much experience you've had there over recent years. Do you have any idea what to expect? Has anyone been giving you guys some information as to what to expect? Uh, to be honest, it's been a few years I was there. I think uh, Shanghai was also a show on, on, on the Global Champions Tour a few years ago. I rode one time there. It was a really good show. Big ring, uh, good paddock, very nice for the horses. And they say it's going to be in a fantastic stadium this year as well. So I think all the riders are looking forward to go and compete there. And let's not forget as well, an LGCT Super Grand Prix ticket as well. So talk to us about that. A, a new set of playoffs taking place in Riyadh later on this year. Do you now put your mind through to uh, LGCT Super Grand Prix? I think, of course, it's very exciting and very honored to be able to, to ride it for the second time this year. Uh, it's, still, it's still far away. We're going to make a good plan this year, see a little bit uh, what horses are jumping well and, and try to make a good plan to go to Riyadh. All right. Nicola Philippas, congratulations. It's great to have you up here and a wonderful victory. Nicola Philippas winning here in Mexico City, a third LGCT Grand Prix title for Nicola Philippas. He, he needs to call his dad and just try and work out whether or not he is indeed in the lead of that race. But for now, it's major championship points. It is a golden ticket as well. And, of course, a wonderful title as now a three-time LGCT Grand Prix winner. This is what the rankings look like at the end of the LGCT Grand Prix of Mexico City. As we said, Eduardo Alvarez Asna now extends his lead on the overall championship table and does put a real firm foot down. He now has a five-point lead over Max Kuna. Simon de Lestra moves up to third on 66 points. But if you take a look at Max Kuna and Eduardo Alvarez Asnar, they all of a sudden move right up and it becomes a real enticing battle for these two riders. Eduardo Sierra, the Portuguese, finds himself in ninth place and Michael van der Flirten, who was in the hunt for so much of 2023 now finds himself in 10th place but a very intriguing studio for us to look back on and a really intriguing Longines Global Champions Tour season to already continue unpacking this is stage 3 of 15 we still have a long long way to go the riders the fans you get a couple of weeks off now before we go through to Shanghai for stage four and then as we pointed out the crazy busy summer block will come thick and fast with event after event after event and that is where our true champions will really come through to the top of their game thank you for joining us in mexico city it has been a wonderful couple of weeks from miami through to mexico city now we thank you for your time we thank you for joining us we say goodbye mexico city thank you for everything but we'll see you again soon in shanghai Time flies. The energy of the city pulses through my veins. Memories turn into seconds. Lessons from the past and victories echo in my mind. Now is the chance to challenge myself, to write my story. Here, where the passion for equestrianism meets the elegance of oriental tradition. The Longines Global Champions Tour of Shanghai, from the 3rd to the 5th of May.